welcome students to the live class of merchant of venice today i am here with act 2 scene 2 of the play in act 2 scene 1 which uh, i have posted earlier we have seen prince of morocco and portia's conversation regarding the choice of casket how he was willing to participate in the lottery of casket but this scene act 2 scene 2 is completely different from what we have seen in act 2 scene 1 uh, in this scene we have introduction to a new character and he is Launcelot Launcelot uh, in this uh, play acts as a uh, a very comic character he is here to provide us comic relief you can say uh, as Shakespeare has uh, planned to do for the audience after a tense uh, scene in act one we have seen the bond story and how a pound of uh, flesh has been uh, made signed in an agreement for 3000 decades and how Portia is in a melancholic state that she cannot make a choice of the person whom she likes and refuse for the person whom she dislikes and a lot of things uh, we have seen so uh, in order to provide a comic relief Launcelot has been presented in the play now let us see uh, what the play begins with uh, the scene uh, can be categorized into three different parts. We will be studying it part wise. First will be Launcelot, uh, his uh, uh, soliloquy. He is speaking about what is going in his mind and then he will be meeting his father. There will be a conversation between them and then we will see uh, Launcelot going in Bassanio's service. There will be a conversation and finally Graciano uh, will request Bassanio to take him to Venice. These are the three parts that is in this scene. Beginning with Launcelot's soliloquy, it's a long one, okay? So you need to uh, remember certain points over here. Uh, in the backdrop of this, I'm just giving you an information that Launcelot is a servant of Shylock, the Jew. Launcelot himself is a Christian. And uh, as we know that uh, Shylock is a greedy man, uh, he is cunning and this because of all these things Launcelot is not happy in his service okay and so he is not able to make up his mind whether to continue serving him or run away from his master Shiloh finally uh, he will decide to run away from his master and here there is a conflict between his conscience and his and fear Conscious over here is you can take it as a positive mindset of uh, Launcelot and Fiend is the uh, negative thought which is forcing him to run away from his master. He will decide to run away accepting the views of the Fiend. So uh, let's begin. Certainly my conscience will serve me to run from this Jew my master. The Fiend is at my elbow and tempts me saying to me go bo. Launcelot Gobo, good Launcelot or good Gobo or good Launcelot Gobo, use your legs, take the start, run away. My conscience says, no take heed honest Launcelot, take heed honest Gobo or as a aforesaid honest Launcelot Gobo, do not run, scorn running with thy heels. Will the most courageous fian bins me pack? Via fian away says the fian. So this is the budge not that it is continued budge not budge says the fian budge not says my conscience so there is a conflict in his mind whether to run away or to stop move or not to move so this is a long one uh, you will understand it you just need to uh, take consideration certain things we will skip to the lines i should stay with the jew my master who god bless the mark is a kind of devil he says that i am not going to continue to live with my master shylock because god bless the mark he is a devil okay he calls him an evil person and to run away from the jew i should be ruled by my fian he says that i have already decided to run away from my master the jew and the fian is giving me a good counsel who serving your reverence is the devil himself Certainly the Jews are very devil incarnation. He says that the devil Shylock is a epitome or incarnation of 
a devil a evil man and in my conscious my conscious but a kind of hard conscious to offer to counsel me to stay with the jew he says that the conscious the positive in me in is advising me giving me counsel to stay with the jew and the fiend gives more friendly counsel he says the enemy the negative in me the th negative thoughts in me is giving me a more better and friendly advice i will run fiend my heels are at your command i will run he says that yes i am going to agree to what is said by my fiend the negative thought i will run away okay in the meantime while he was running he sees old gobo with a basket in his hand who is this old gobo old gobo is launcelot's father okay and to describe him he is you can see in the image he was high sand blind he was a gravel blind means he cannot see anything he was complete blind so gobo just comes in front of launcelot and ask master young man you i pray you which is the way to master jew he just wants to know the direction to the jew's house shylock's house launcelot again uh, you can see it in the bracket aside aside means he is talking up to the audience he says oh heavens this is my true begotten father who being more than sand blind high gravel blind knows me not i will try confusions with him he just introduces his father indirectly to the audience saying that he is completely blind he cannot see me and now i am going to try confusions on, on him he is he will do all possible way uh, he will try all possible means in order to confuse his own father is just to create a comic uh, situation gobo again gobo says master young gentleman i pray you which is the way to master you he says gobo uh, gobo just says to uh, this launcelot young man can you tell me where, what is the direction to the jews house launcelot just makes him go uh, round and round and he says turn up on your right hand at the next turning but at the next turning of all on your left mary the very next turning and turn of no hand but turn down immediately to the jews house he just uh, makes him circle round here and there and says turn to your left turn to your right and finally you will reach now if i am telling you a direction and making you go round and round you will reach nowhere so gobo by god sonities it will be a hard way to hit can you tell me whether one launcelot that dwells with him dwells with him or not he just confirms that i just want to know whether uh, a person launcelot who used to live with him lives with him or not launcelot talk you of young master launcelot imagine he is talking about himself and exaggerating the thing in a way again then he uh, goes aside and says mark me now now will i raise the waters talk you of young master launcelot again he returns back and says raise water here means that i will make him cry okay gobo no master sir but a poor man son his father though i say it is an honest exceedingly poor man and god be thanked well to live gobo says no 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 sir he is not a master he is the son of a poor man exceedingly poor man okay and god be thanked that they both are surviving launcelot well let his father be what will we talk of young master launcelot launcelot says that well whatever his father is let him be you are talking about that young master launcelot he repeats this just an exaggeration gobo your worship friend and launcelot so he says yes your respected friend launcelot but i pray you ergo old man ergo i beseech you thank you of young master launcelot now launcelot has learned certain words okay uh, latin words ergo which means therefore so he is trying to exaggerate the thing and he wants to express that he knows more okay trying confusions so he says oh therefore you are i request you sir you are talking about that great man launcelot go go oh flonsilot aim to your please your mastership launcelot ergo master launcelot talk not to master launcelot father for the young gentleman according to fates and destinies and such odd sayings the sister is sleep and such branches of learning is indeed deceased or as you would say in plain terms gone to heaven launcelot says therefore master launcelot you are talking about that great man father 
that young gentleman launcelot according to his own fortune and according to his own destiny and as we say uh, in odd saying the three sisters of learning as they are deceased okay as they are dead in the similar way your son in plain terms have died has perished gone to heaven gobo mary god forbid the boy was the very staff of my age my very prop of course uh, gobo was very upset and he says that he was the only support he was the only staff he was the only uh, person whom i can lean up in my old age launcelot now again he says do i look like a, a hoven or a curdle post a staff or a prop he is saying that do i look like a stick to be hold on or a lean down do you know me father he just changes and then he goes to his father and says do you know me father go bo alaq the day i'm sorry for the day i know you not i don't know you young gentleman but i pray you tell me is my boy god rest his soul alive or dead again he is in that same thought that his son has died so he says to him i don't know you gentlemen just tell me whether my son is dead or alive now launcelot's uh, conscience pricks and he says do you not know me father go bo alaq sir i'm sand blind i know you not he says that i'm completely blind i don't know you launcelot nay indeed if you had your eyes you might fail of knowing me it is a wise father that knows his own child he says that i know you will not be able to know it it is a gentle father a wise intelligent father who knows his son well old man i will tell you news of your son give me your blessings truth will come to light murder cannot be hid long a man son may but at the lens truth will be out he just goes down and he just goes nails and he says bless me father i will tell you about your son because truth cannot be hidden for a long time a murder mystery is resolved some day or the other in the similar way a man son will also come to light so truth cannot be stretched for a longer period of time go go pray you sir stand up i'm sure you are not launcelot my boy he just says that stand up you are not my son go go i cannot think you are my son launcelot i know not what i shall think of that but i am launcelot he says that i do not know what to say but i am launcelot the jews man the servant of shylock and i'm sure marjorie your wife is my mother and he takes the name of his mother and says and i'm sure that marjorie is my mother gobo listening to the name of his wife marjorie says yes yes indeed her name is marjorie i will be sworn if thou be launcelot thou art my own flesh own blood god worship might be he be what a beard hast thou got thou hast got more hair on thy chin than dobin my fill horse has on his tail actually over here it's again a comic scene gobo uh, is completely blind okay launcelot is on his knees bending down when his father blesses him his hand is on his head and there was hair there but he thinks that he was touching his beard so he says oh my god you have got lot of uh, hair on your chin than our horse dobin has on her tail Launcelot says uh, it was a funny way. He said it should seem then that Dobbin's tail grows backward. I'm sure he had more hair on his tail than I have on my face when I last saw him. He says that lastly when I saw him, it has more hair on his tail. Go, go, Lord, how art thou changed? How dost thou thy master agree? I have brought him a present. How agree you now? He just inquires that what is your relationship with Shylock? I have brought him to give some gift. Launcelot says that well, well, but for my own part, as I have set up my race to run away, he says that I have decided to run away, flee from my old master, the Jew. So I will not rest till I have run some ground. He says that I am going to run away. till i have reached somewhere my master a very jew give him a present he says that give him a halter if you want to gift him something gift him a halter means a rope i am famished in his service he says that i have grown so weak in his service uh, you can touch uh, every finger i have with my ribs again a uh, uh, opposite statement in order to create laughter father i am glad you are come give me a present to one master besan you who indeed gives rare new liveries If I serve not him, I will run as far as God has any ground. O oh, rare fortune! Here comes a man to him, father. For I am a Jew. If I served you, 
any longer. He says that if at all you want to gift this, uh, what you have brought, give to a new master. I have decided to serve him. He is talking about Bassanio. In the meantime, Bassanio is seen coming with his uh, friends and followers. Bassanio. Bassanio is giving instruction to Leonardo saying that the supper should be prepared by 5 o'clock and he gives him some letters and he says that see that it is delivered and he also says that you see that the dresses which are uh, required to be made are done in the uh, given time period and ask Graciano to come to my house. Okay, uh, then the servant exists. Okay, and he goes away. Launcelot was forcing his father to him, father to him, father. Then uh, Gobo just goes uh, closer and says, God bless your worship. Bassanio, grand mercy, wouldest thou out with me? Uh, he says, grant, God grant you also mercy. What do you want from me? Gobo then, here's my son, the poor boy. He is insisting on. Launcelot, again, he just says, no, I'm not a poor boy, but a rich Jew's man. That would so, as my father shall specify, my father will tell you more about it. Gobo just says that he hath a great infection, sir, as one would say to sir. He says that Gobo has the habit of uh, serving. Gobo, he hath a great infection, sir, as he would say to sir. Launcelot, indeed, the short and the longest, I serve the Jew and have a desire as my father shall specify. He says the short and long of the thing is that I want to serve as it is specified. Gobo, his master and he saving your worship reverence as caretaker cousins. Gobo just justifies to Visanya that both of them are not doing well. They are like enemies. Launcelot again he says to be brief. The very truth is that he says to speak in a very brief manner. I just only want to say having done me wrong doth cause me as my father being. I hope an old man shall fruitify. Again, he says that my father will fruitify unto you. He will explain it to you. Gobo, I have here a dish of doves. Okay, he has just brought a dish of doves to give it to Shiloh. But now he is giving it to Besanu that I would bestow upon your worship and suitors. Launcelot again says, in very brief, the suit is impertinent to myself, as your worship shall know. By this honest old man, and though I say it, though old man, yet a poor man, my father. He says that he's a poor man. He, he is just uh, going on uh, exaggerating the thing. Bassanio, one speak for both. What would you? He says, one of you speak for both. Why are you just going on uh, explaining the things repeatedly? Launcelot, serve you, sir. Now he clearly says that I want to serve you. I want to act as your servant. I want to be your servant. Gobo, that is the very defect of the matter, sir. He says this is the gist of what we wanted to say. Bassanio, I know thee well. Thou hast obtained thy suit. Shiloh, thy master, spoke with me this day and hath preferred thee. If it be preferment to leave a rich Jew's service to become the follower of so poor a gentleman, Bassanio say, said that I know it very well that you have been serving Shylock. I had a talk with him and he told me about you. He says that if you prefer to work uh, with me leaving that rich Jew service, why do you want to follow a poor man like me? Launcelot's reply was, the old proverb is very well parted between my master Shylock and you, sir. You have the grace of God, sir, and he had enough. He says the old proverb no, is very much suited with both of uh, us that you, uh, although you don't have much, but you have the grace of God. But the other man, he has enough, but he does not have the wisdom. Bassanio, Thou speakest it well. Go, father, with thy son. Take leave of thy old master and inquire my lordings out. Give him a library, library more guarded than his followers. See, it is done. He says that go with your father and say goodbye to Shiloh. And he instructs his servant that give him a uh, better cloth that is more guarded than the other servants. Now, Launcelot is too happy because Bassanio has taken, taken him in his service. Now, funningly, he will have a conversation with his father. He says, Father, in. I cannot get a service. No, I have never a tongue in my head. He says to his father, Father, you used to say that I will never get a service. 
you used to say that i have no tongue in my head i cannot express what i want well if any man in italy have a fairer table would not offer to swear upon a book he says no man in italy has such a wonderful uh, and fair fist that i have in the whole of italy i shall have good fortune i will have good luck go to hear a simple line of life then he sees the line in his hand and he says that it is a simple line okay here is a small trifle of wives i am going to get few wives 15 wives is nothing he says 15 wives is nothing for a simple man 11 widows and 9 maids in simple coming see his addition okay he says that i will get married to 11 widows and 9 uh, maidens and for a man like me it's a simple coming i will be escape from drowning thrice he says that teen bar hum doobne se bach jayenge and be in the peril of my life with the edge of feather bed and every time i will fall down i will fall fall on a feather bed that bed will be of feather and will be saved well if fortune be a woman she is good wench for this gear he says that if a woman is a fortune if woman is a good luck then i am going to have it in plenty father come I will take leave of the Jew with a twinkling in my eyes. He says, "Father, come, come along with me. I will say good bye to my old master with a spark in my eyes, with happiness in my eyes." Both of them, Launcelot and Old Gobbo, leave the scene. In the meantime, there is a conversation between Leonardo and uh, Bassanio. I pray thee, good Leonardo, think of this. These things being brought in orderly, best stored, return in haste, for I do feast tonight. My best esteemed acquaintance, hie thee go. Uh, Bisanio just uh, says to Leonardo that make sure that you do better preparation for the supper at night, because my friends will be there for the dinner. My very close friend, Leonardo. He says that my best endeavor shall be done. He says that I will make sure to do it. in the meantime graciano enters we are in the last part of the scene uh, where this is important children from the perspective of your exams uh, generally question are asked and it can be asked so you will be focusing on while you are studying and uh, again i am telling you if you are having any problem we are in a live class you can question me in the comment section i will be replying it to you uh, let's see what is the conversation between graciano as well as uh, bisanio graciano where is your master he asks leonardo he just says yonder sir he walks he says there sir he walks and leonardo he is going to do his job what he was supposed to do now graciano shouts signor bisanio bisanio graciano graciano i have a suit to you graciano says that i want to Uh, ask something to you, Bisanio. You have obtained it. What do you want? You say, Graciano. You must not deny me. I must go with you to Belmont. He says that do not refuse me. I want to accompany you to Belmont, Bisanio. Why then you must? He says, of course you can. But hear thee, Graciano. But listen carefully, Graciano. Thou art too wild. too rude and bold of voice he says that you are too uh, wild in your behavior you are too rude in your tone and you are very bold while you speak parts that become the happily enough some of your parts no some of your uh, spirits behavior becomes too happy and in and in such eyes as ours appear not false because we are friends to you it is not a mistake okay it is not a fault from our part but where thou art not known but where people do not know you why they are shown something too liberal why to show them something so liberal so funny why why to uh, represent yourself in such a manner by being rude by being wild to be very bold pray thee take pain to ally with some cold drop so modesty he says i request you to be polite okay have some modest behavior within you and have control over thy skipping spirit have control over your uh, excited spirit be calm 
least thou thy vile behavior i be misconstructed in the place i go to and lose my hopes he says that why we should go to a new place and because of your behavior because of your mannerism which is untamable uncontrollable people will misconstruct me will misunderstand me as well as you so uh, have ali with some cold drops of modesty have some change in your uh, fervor mannerism and if at all i will take you to the place where you are behaving in this behaving in this manner i will lose my hopes we should not do that indirectly he is trying to say to graciano that he should be modest in his behavior graciano's reply signa brasanio hear me he says uh, just listen to me if i do not put on a sober habit talk with respect and swear but now when then wear prayer books in my pocket look demurely nay more while grace is saying hood my nice he says that i promise you that if i do not put on best behavior sober behavior okay uh, talk with respect i will try to be very respectful while talking to others i will keep a prayer book swear now and then and look in the modest way i will always put my uh, i is down with my hat i will say amen use all the observances of civility i will try to behave in the most civilized manner like one well studied in a sad austin to please his grandma he says that i will put on all the uh, etiquettes all the mannerism that are polite civilized okay in order to please one's grandma people do that but i will be always putting on this habit to show the best of mine never trust me more and he says that if at all i do not do this don't trust me misanyo well we shall see your bearing misanyo says okay let me see what you are saying will be right or not graciano ni but i bar tonight he says i request you not to do that tonight you shall not gorge me by what i do tonight he says he says that please do not gorge me do not keep an eye on me tonight as we know what was that day it was a supper where all the friends were going to close acquaintances were going to get together so he says that do not uh, put a gorge on me there basanio says no that were pity i would entreat you rather to put on your boldest suit of mirth he says that i entreat you to put the best mannerism best uh, mimicry uh, you should be lively he says you uh, i will not be gorging you tonight for we have friends there and everyone knows you the purpose is merriment and the purpose of getting together is to enjoy to be merry so i will not look at you uh, at that time i will not gorge you but fare you well i have some business but he says for the time being goodbye i have some work to do graciano and i must to leonardo and the rest but we will visit you at the supper time graciano says okay uh, i also am going to accompany leonardo and we will be meeting at the supper time and they all exit uh, let me just uh, put everything in uh, a summary the very first thing was launcelot leaving shylock service the reason he says is that shylock is a very devil incarnation and uh, he is famished in his service he will himself turn into a jew if he serves him any longer then comes gobo with a dish of doves to be presented to shylock but he uh but launcelot stops him saying that gift him her halter instead because of all the things that he has suffered in his service he uh, he says that what gift you have brought give him to his new master that is bisanio further on we see that how uh, both old gobo and launcelot request bisanio to take him in his service and he is accepted in his service and a bit of comic relief that look at my fist how i have a triple of wives in my life 11 widows and nine maids will be simple coming in further on he says that he will be escape from drowning thrice on a feather bed all these things he said there is no one in the whole of italy having such a uh, such a uh, beautiful life life to be saved every time and to have so much of enjoyment and his father used to say that he he cannot speak for himself and he cannot get a service so he is very proud that he has got sort of the service of bisanio further on we see that how bisanio and leonardo are planning for the uh, supper party in which all the friends will get together and finally we see graciano's request to bisanio to take him to 
take him to Belmont and uh, how uh, Bassanio says to Graciano that he has to keep, keep a control over his mannerism. Sometimes he is too bold, too rude, all these things he need to uh, work on and he has to behave in the most modest manner. How Graciano promises that he will uh, behave in the most civilized manner and finally they are uh, here we end the scene so i hope uh, i have been able to explain the scene to you and uh, you have also come to know about the important uh, aspect of the scene and if you have liked this uh, please uh, comment and uh, thank you very much for attending this session uh, with me uh, subscribe to my channel if you have liked it and suggest your friends too thank you